Welcome to Pitch in the Zone, our weekly gathering of coaches that help one presenter or one company with a three minute pitch. The coaches, like every week, include Nathan Gold, hailing from San Francisco. His focus is on high stakes presentations and he has helped numerous companies raise millions of dollars in funding. We also have Michael Marjak. Michael is a CTO, an author, a speaker with a tremendous experience in the startup world as well. We have Massimo Peroncelli hailing from Thailand. He is an entrepreneur uh, with a tremendous attention to detail. Whatever it is, whether it's a missing comma on your slide or something in your message, Massimo will most likely pick it up. And then we have Rick. Uh, Rick is a presentation coach, a trainer who also helps a lot of people tightening up their pitches, their presentations. And of course, we have a number of previous participants who have been in the pitch zone that come back and also help our presenter with their pitch. Now, our presenters today, this is very exciting because it's a novelty for pitch in the zone. We actually have two presenters. If you were with us last week, you saw David Keller presenting Safety Saber, a really, really cool solution that makes bike riding much, much safer. And his enthusiasm for what we provided to him in terms of feedback and recommendations and suggestions made him come back already this week again. But this week, he comes back with his brother, John. So welcome, both of you, David and John, to Pitch in the Zone. Thank you. Thank you, Claudio. Thank you. And like every week before we start, let me ask you very briefly, who is the audience for your pitch and what kind of a setting do you anticipate giving this pitch in? David? Well, I I can, first, David? Yeah, angel investors. We're looking for uh, early funding investors. All right, very good. You are going to share your screen, so please set up your screen sharing. And in the meantime, I will also very briefly explain Massimo's role here, his additional role in addition to being a coach is to display the time so that you have something to go by. Maybe you want to pin him in a convenient location on your screen to see whether you can keep within the three minutes. And with that, I want to welcome both of you, David and John Keller, the brothers that will make bicycle riding way more safer than it is today. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, everyone. I'm very glad to be here. Very excited to be here. My name is John Keller. I'm the founder and inventor of the Safety Saber. What is the Safety Saber? It is a bicycle rear safety light. It's a rear safety light. What I'd like everybody to do right now with me is let's go for a ride. Let's go for a virtual ride with me right now. Pretend you're on this road that you see on your screen and you're riding with me. Beautiful out, sunshine, and you're riding down the road. And what you have on your bike right now is just what the competition has, what, the, what is sold throughout the world. A mini little four inch light, three inch light that you can barely see during the day. You can barely see maybe a little bit better at night blinking on the back of your bike. Now imagine riding down the road with cars going by you 30, 40, 50 miles an hour. They're zooming by. It gets a little scary. It gets a little nerve wracking. You can hear them coming. You can feel them coming, but you don't know how much space they're going to give you on the road because you don't have a shoulder. You don't have much room to work with. And they're going by. you. Now, imagine this. If everybody can do this. Everybody put out your left hand. You're riding with me on a ride. Everybody have the left hand out, riding down the road. Now what's going to happen with those cars and trucks? What are they going to do? That's right. They're going to go around your arm. They're going to go around your hand. They're going to give you more space on the road. And that's 
you know, for a hand being out there, you can't do it. That's not practical. You can't have a light that's that big. Well, what the safety saber is, it is a elongated 18 inch light that's patent pending with many, many features and benefits that no other light in the world has. Only the safety saber has it. It's designed to give you a margin of safety on the road. Because right now, cars and trucks are supposed to give you at least three feet of uh, room on the road. Most cars and trucks don't know what three feet is. The safety saber not only helps you feel safe, but also helps those cars and trucks go around you because they can see the space that they have to give you. It gives you that bubble of safety that every rider wants to feel safe on the road. And that's what we're selling. We're not selling just a bike light, we're selling safety. Now with that, I'd like to introduce you to my brilliant brother, David King Keller, Dr. David King Keller. He's a CEO of Safety Saber and he's gonna explain our marketing and business platform. David? Hi everybody, I'm so excited to be here. I want you to know that we have a fantastic group of business partners and advisors and the market is huge. It's 56 billion globally, 7 billion US, 17 million new bike sales every year. The price of the Saber will be 59, the pro version 99. Sales will come from current bicycle riders and riders like me who are currently afraid to get on the road with cars, new bike sales, and the half a billion riders around the world, each of which would like to feel safer on the road. Our go-to-market strategy is the, excuse me, <laughs> our go-to-market strategy is licensing a bicycle parts distributor. We will license the IP to them and all our money and therefore will be profit. Our timeline is by fall with funding, we will have a new patent, we'll have our new prototype, we'll have a new video, and we will license then a global distributor. We're looking for $240,000 funding. And what I'd like to say in closing is that the next time you come up behind a bicycle rider, ask yourself, would they be safer and you be safer with the safety saver? Thank you for your time. Thank you, everyone. Wow, 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 wow. I'm quite impressed. Uh, the energy, and please stop sharing the screen, David. The energy of both of you as a duo, wow, really dynamic. I love what you did by taking away the focus on, you know, the accidents and things like that and putting more focus on the actual safety part. Really, really well done. Uh, Simply love it, love it. You went a little bit over time, but nothing that cannot be managed at this point. So Thank I you. want to uh, start the round of feedback with Michael because Michael also made a comment in the chat about that shift on focus on safety rather than you know the negative aspects. Michael, please take it from here. Absolutely. So the um, again, much, much better than last week. Um, absolutely. And uh, I like the fact that you're focused on the positives and the uh, benefits of the, 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 the whole concept. I also like the idea that you're, um, as you're pitching towards the, uh, the angel investors, that you're giving them the license play, that this is really a licensing concept. Um, so understanding where they're coming in and how you plan on moving forward with it. So I think those are both really good um, uh, additions or modifications you made. Um, funding part of it, the ask was there, um, but I still am unclear as to if this is truly a licensing play, what that, that revenue would, or that re the money would be required for um, uh, to do that. So understanding what that, that longer term thing is. The product concept piece, I think you spent maybe a little too long focusing on what the concept was. I think after you get that first little bit, an angel investor will understand it. Um, you're not necessarily pitching to the public, you're pitching to someone who's looking to do the invest piece. So I think right. you can probably shorten that up just a little bit and, um, and then focus more on, on the funding piece, the licensing piece, and then where you see the, uh, how you're planning on licensing it to others. Because if that licensing play is at $39 as a retail price, I'm not sure how that fits into what the licensing fees come in and to whom did they would, uh, what the actual licensing um, profits would be on, on that side. So that's what I would, I would guess focus on a little bit more. Thank you. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much, Michael. And today I'm gonna change the order a little bit because I would love to have somebody that wasn't here the last time, that hasn't heard the pitch, that heard the pitch today for the first time. Tell us what you got out of it and what kind of suggestions you have. May I ask Jess? Jess, you were watching it very attentively. Please <laughs> provide 
any type of feedback that you can to David and John. Sure, I thought it was great. I love the story. I liked how you took us on that journey in the beginning. Um, I thought the slides were great. My one question is, are any, is anybody using this yet? Um, no, we just, have, John, we just have prototypes. I've used it. Yeah. I've used it. Yeah, we have okay. one working prototype and that's part of why we need the funding. So have other cyclists, like have you talked to other cyclists? Have they tested it? I'm just curious if you've had a group of people say, we love this, this is great. And we, we have the same problem. Yes, I, I went on a uh, bike ride pre-COVID with about 4,000 riders. It was a 100-mile bike ride, um, like a, a fun fun ride. And I had my safety saber. And everybody and their brother said, what, what is that? What is that? And I'd give me a chance to pitch them and tell them, tell them exactly what that, what that is and how it works. They all loved it. I mean, everybody I've ever talked to about this product that rides a bike gets it. They get that they need you know, you know, how, how it works. It's just yeah. a matter of producing, you know, a better one. This is a prototype. We have uh, all these other features and benefits into the new one and getting it produced and getting it marketed. Right. So make sure you share that because that's an amazing story. Right. And I want to hear that everybody wants this, you know, you just can't make them fast enough. Okay. But other otherwise, great job guys. Oh, Thank great. you, Jess. That was great, great feedback. Thank you. Yeah, great, great yes. feedback, Jess. It's so, so, so it's such a good day having you back at Pitch in the Zone here, and always, always great feedback. Right on. I'm gonna continue with people that have not heard this pitch before. Uh, Kevin, Kevin, you joined us, I think. Just Mario, I did. I have seen it before. Oh, Absolutely. you have seen it before? In that case, let me go to Liederman. Liederman, you haven't seen it before, right? What did you think? Right. I, I really liked the slides, uh, and I liked how you took us through the journey to, with, uh, you know, as, as a writer, you made me feel uh, the ride. So that was good, taking, taking us to, to the, the feeling of it, right? And, and the emotional aspect that, ex tr that truly exists when you're riding and, and cars are going by and it's, it's, it's scary. Um, I understand what you're saying about the, the light itself. Sometimes you don't know uh, as a rider if they, if they can truly see you because the size of, this, uh, of the lights and when it's dark, it, it's a problem. I, I like that. Um, I think one question that I have that kind of made me I definitely agree. What is it that you're going to do with the money? Why do you need money? Uh, but uh, the other question was about the patent. You say we will have a patent. And when you said that, it made me think, well, how could you patent a light? Um, and, and what would that do to your business? I guess that's, that's kind of that, the puzzle that I had in, in, in mind. What is it unique that uh, deserves a patent? And is that a problem if you don't get a patent? Um, so that's, that's kind of my takeaway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Liederman. And, and you're actually bringing up a very interesting point because maybe I just didn't hear it this time, but last time I think you were also talking about how that there is some intelligence in this solution that will alert the bike rider that there is oncoming cars from the back. And I think by adding that back into it again, you will provide the answer that Liederman now was just looking for about, you know, what's so special about this thing? Because it's more than just the light. Debbie, can I ask you, what kind of feedback do you have for David and John? Um, good morning. Yes, it was. it's really a wonderful product. I can see that um, being in Durango, Colorado, there's tons of bicycles here and, you know, it's just really very important product. The one couple com comments I had was um, you just quickly flashed on the pro and the regular and I didn't know what that, what that meant, you know, what was, what's the pro and what's the regular one. And then I did want to mention to you, um, I watched a recent Shark Tank and there was a company on that's called breakfreetech.com and they have a device for motorcycles. And so I bought, bought one for my husband 
but you might want to watch that Shark Tank or go to their site because they actually are shipping and you know they talk about patents and licenses. It might be helpful to you because it's it's a motorcycle, but um, definitely the same concept. It goes on the helmet, and so it might give you some ideas. And so I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. But really great job. Um, thank you. Thank you, Debbie. And that's a great, great tip with, uh, you know, checking out other similar kind of products, similar kind of solutions. We have also somebody on the line here that called in by phone. Um, I'm not sure whether you heard, saw the pitch or not. All right. Yeah. Hi, this is Avi. Yeah, thank you. I was on the phone. I was walking, so I just uh, heard the pitch. But great job. I really love the product as well. Uh, and looking forward to getting one, actually. Mm, very good. That's the reaction. That's the reaction I think uh, David and John are getting frequently because I'm also one of these people that are like, you know, move on, move on. I want this thing. I want this thing. This is really, really cool. Absolutely. All right. Moving on in that case, Massimo, what kind of feedback do you have? You also put a couple of valuable comments into the chat box. Please take it from here. Yes, let me go back to the presentation itself since I already seen the, the previous one. Uh, I love the fact that uh, you actually show the product also during the day because last time we were not sure that if it was also useful during the day or not. And uh, regarding the let's say technical problems you had with the slides, I would suggest uh, removing any kind of transition because they are kind of slows down. You never know if they're starting or not. So that's probably the reason why you started pressing the buttons and uh, you went back and forth. But if I have to pick the thing that I didn't like was the fact that you started saying, let me take you on a virtual ride with me. And I was excited. Wow, is that 3D virtual reality, augmented reality? It was a picture. I said, okay, is it a frozen video? No. I waited and waited and waited. It was not even a video. It was a picture, a virtual, right? So either you change the, what you call it or you make it more exciting. So that's my two cents worth of comment. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Good feedback. Good feedback, Massimo. Thank you very much. Moving on to Rick, Rick Pollack. My apologies for in the introduction, your last name just, it was at the tip of my tongue, couldn't come out. Rick, <laughs> please take it from here. Okay, uh, I really liked it because I, I saw the pitch last week and John, I liked the way you, you began and yeah, I, I think I had the same reaction about the virtual ride, but I think it's just, you know, let, let's go for a ride, come for a ride with me and imagine hearing and feeling and I could. So I thought that that worked out well. And also the left hand out imagining that and the more space. And for someone who used to ride his bike uh, in Boston traffic a lot and having cars come very close to me and scaring me, uh, I can understand that and, and feel that. And I, I like that, you know, the margin of safety and helping you and drivers feel the safety and you're selling safety, not just the light. I thought that resonated very well. Uh, one of the comments from last week, and I think it was uh, Michael made the comment uh, about children. And I don't think you mentioned anything about children having that on. And I, I think that's worth a, a couple seconds saying that yeah, it's, it's a light, but it keeps, it keeps you safer in the day and it keeps your kids safer during the day. Perfect. And I think that's, that's worth talking about. <clears throat> uh, and I think, uh, you know, David, I, I liked your, your point, but in three minutes, I think it's very difficult to have two presenters. And I have a feeling that you know, if you're giving this pitch in different cases, you might one of you just might be doing it. So I think maybe more a bit on the transition of John, why you, you, you introduced your brother, uh, but he's talking about things that you could talk about as well. So I don't know if um, that transition, because you're, you're just in a three minute pitch, I understand in a 15 minute presentation, you want to break it up between the, presenta between the presenters, yeah. but with three minutes, that might be distracting to the audience, John. They're just following you, and then all of a sudden, Dave is there. And I, I know he's behind the marketing plan and the rollout of that, but I don't. I, I think maybe you should practice it with the two of you, and then just one of you giving the whole thing, and, and see what you think works better. So, but much, much better than last week. And I think uh, you know you've, you've 
focused more on the benefit and really made the people in the audience feel, oh yeah, I can, I can see what the problem is. And I think uh, just one other thing about, I believe your Bluetooth model, that would let you hear how close the car is. So I think that was the thing that the comment before of, because you mentioned, imagine hearing and feeling the car, but you don't know how much space there is. Yes. So that's the, that's your advanced model that's actually going to give you an alert, you know, car is too close or something like that. So, but, but much better, very good job guys. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Rick. And you also bring up an interesting point about, you know, two presenters or one presenter and in especially short pitches. Uh, my opinion is a little bit different than yours, Rick. I like the two presenters. I think it brings in a new level of dynamics. And um, Debbie mentioned Shark Tank before. Shark Tank is about a minute pitch. And very, very often you even have teams, two, three, or more people coming in to pitch. So it can be done. And when it's done properly, I believe it adds an other level of dimension. But of course, it's a, it's, a, it's a real personal choice. I personally, I like it. I love it. But your mileage, of course, may vary. Kevin, Kevin Minier. Yeah, what kind of feedback yeah. do you have I, for our presenters? Yep. I think I did see it. I must have watched the, the recording. Um, yeah, it's really good. I actually quite like the two presenters because it gives you that sense of a bigger a bigger company, a bigger business. I think some of the things that didn't come across too well was what the 240,000 was for, especially with the licensing and, and those sorts of things. I think we still don't really know what the profit is. I don't think anybody sort of actually gave us some idea. And I noticed the price, I think, of the cheaper version has gone up, isn't it, from 39 to 59 dollars now which it which is interesting um i love the um, sort of market testing that would have been good if it was in there uh, and how we did that it, that would be really good if we put that in and also i do have a fear of competition so why why don't you fear competition even with a patent in this sort of day and age the um i would say that maybe a lot of what you could be said is by a little video the true video where you really cut it you know really sort of cut it quick you know putting it out, getting on your bike, car coming along. You know, you could probably say a lot of the things you wanted to say in like five or six seconds with a little video. So uh, I would sort of suggest that. And um, we've talked about the different types and what the benefits of those are, which you need to do. And um, yeah, but it, the, the energy and the power and, the, you know, having, having the manly cycles around, I think is really good. So uh, if you can squeeze it to three minutes, go for it, I would say. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you. Great, great feedback. Thank you very much, Kevin. And moving right along, Scott. Scott, you have been in this position before. You will be back in, I believe, two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. So what kind of observations have you made and how can you help our presenters? I really like the, uh, the improvements you've made, the excitement that was shown with the product and, uh, and how it differs from other products. I really thought that was great. And then the comment that was made earlier that about having other input from people, from bikers, but you might even include local bike clubs and, and get a hold of individuals that could actually look at that product and show it to their members um, and get their feedback and, and support for that type of product. But it was a really, it was really great. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much, Scott. And I think we have one person left, and that is, of course, Nathan. Nathan, you have worked together with David and John. Uh, you also took very many notes right now. What kind of feedback do you want to share right now um, that can help David and John and everybody that's listening to this recording later on? Uh, you're not, yeah, you're muted. Yeah. Uh, okay. I agree with everything everybody has said. Uh, uh, John, thank you so much for improvising well beyond what you practiced. It was fun to watch. I knew that was going to happen with your personality. You went <laughs> a minute and 28 seconds, which was, oh no, yeah, no, yeah, that's right, which was originally your plan? Was that? Uh, I've been going long. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's all right. That's what happens in these sort of situations. But 
What I really liked about your opening is your use of your arm to get all of us to do something. And we actually experienced what that amount of space would be. So as I, I forget who said it, but I would get straight to that. And, and uh, Kevin, you said the video. I think that they have that on the, on the, the board to do. So once you have that video, it, like Kevin said, you can compress a lot of your opening down. And perhaps once that video is done, go into a little rant of those wonderful features that, oh, by the way, this is not just a light on a stick. This has this and this and this and this so that the driver and the biker and the blah, blah, blah. So with that, let me turn it over to, to, the, to the guy that's bringing this to the market, my, my PhD brother, David. And then you have your time to talk as the inventor. And then there's more time for the business because as an investor, they don't need a minute and a half on the problem and the product. Okay. That's, that's too much generally. Yeah. So I would like to see you cut that down and I'll certainly be able to work with you on that. But this was, uh, it, it's so fun to see the pendulum going this way and this way and this way. Do you by any chance have any, any video recordings of anybody on that bike ride that you can use somehow, some way? I do not. I do not. We have. Uh, okay, go on, on another bike. bike ride. Go on another yeah. one. <laughs> and this time mount four cameras around your body cams. Yeah. Like get a get your GoPro on and just let people walk up to you and say, what? What is that? What? I mean, you get so much excellent uh, video that you can just use to help build the momentum around this. And then I, there's a four more minutes. I want to turn it over to uh, the uh, Claudio, but let's have a debrief with with you two later on or another day because I have a few other things. But the one thing I, that, that sparked my, uh, it inspired me and I forget who said it, I, I honestly, and I apologize, is perhaps instead of going for big money here, once you have that patent, why don't you take the guitar hero route? Huh. And the short story there, if you don't know it is, they didn't have money to, to produce millions of these things and stick them in the stores and get people to go buy them. So they produced about a thousand and they sold them out. And then all, then all they were sold out, we're sold out, we're sold out. So produce a thousand, sell them, we're sold out. And now all the investors will be banging at your door because now you can take pre-orders and build that real life. Anyway, there's more behind that, but check out the good guitar hero story. You, you almost could be that instead of going for giving away half your business to investors. Mm. Yeah, I would yeah. agree with that. So as, as I, I put in the comments, um, I don't know if, you, if you've tried this or thought about it, to do, go to the Kickstarter route to get not just the product out to consumers uh, as a direct, way, direct pathway, but it would also get you a bigger focus group because the folks who would, would be investing in that to, for the original set of products would also give you a lot of feedback about how the product uses, how they're, how they're working with it, what design improvements they would like from you, gives you a much bigger focus group that's paying you for the product and paying you to help produce that limited number. I mean, that's what Kickstarter really is, is very good for. And like Nathan said, you don't have to give away the farm to be able to do that because these mm -hmm. folks are, are paying for the product and, and giving you that money um, to, to, with a, obviously a timeline in, in there to get their product but it gives you that capability of, of building that up internally. So I don't know if you've looked into contract manufacturing or whatever to be able to produce these things um, yourself in some limited quantity, but that would be an, another option to go down mm -hmm. to, to give you some additional feedback, but also get a lot of users riding with it out and, uh, and getting that, that wow factor. Yeah, thank you. I like that. Right. Oh, some feedback. I just love how these sessions are going. Thank you very much, uh, Michael, Nathan, and everybody on the call here. I want to turn the microphone over very briefly back to David or John and John. Uh, any final thoughts, anything that you want to share with the group? And by the way, both of you will be coming back on April the 1st, if yes, I yes, remember yes. correctly. And this is not an April Fool's joke. You will come back <laughs> for a third round. And I'm already looking forward to what you are going to do with the feedback that you have received. But please, uh, any, any thoughts that you want to share right now? David, John, please. We have still another minute or two. I'll let it, uh, John talk. I'll just say that I'm so grateful for the thoughts. There's some brilliant comments. Well, they're all brilliant, but some were really insightful in terms of things that we need to act on and some new ideas. 
So this has been very, very helpful. John, over to you. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, third time's a charm. I think we'll help. We'll be very laser <laughs> next time we're next time we're back on with all the feedback that we got. Um, great feedback, and yeah, you know, I just I'm just excited about getting it out there. I mean, I just I just want to produce it. I just want to get it out there because I hate writing without this thing. And I know that there's a million other people who feel the exact same way. I just got to get it to them. So the feedback and, you know, trying to get, you know, trying to get it out and produce a few and get it to, uh, you know, friends or, you know, bike clubs to try it out, I think it's going to be very helpful with that feedback because that's what people want to see. If they can see it, they get it. So thank you so much for allowing us to be here and, and, for, and for all your great feedback. We're going to take it to heart. Me and David, we're going to go back to work. Great. Wonderful. We really, really look forward to seeing the next version. And with that, our 30 minutes today are up. Pitch in the zone. I want to thank every single person on the call for your valuable feedback, helping our presenters week in, week out. And with that, I wish you a wonderful day, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And I shall see you again next week. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone.